Hello everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program, but it's not the Kerbal Space Program we know and love. This is Kerbal Space Program 2, and maybe this will become the Kerbal Space Program we know and love, but it's early access right now. I don't know exactly what to expect, I've come into this pretty blind, right? I've deliberately avoided all of the uh, free release stuff, because I want to judge it for myself. I don't want to have any other opinions clouding that judgment. So what I'm expecting here is something that is roughly at the same level of content as KSP1 right now, with a few extra parts maybe here and there, but mostly it's the same as unmodded KSP1. That's what I'm expecting. We'll see if that's accurate. Now, as of... Ooh. Apparently I require coughing. Fantastic. As of right now, we are not entirely sure what to expect here, and so I can't really create an idea at this point. We'll get there. Maybe by the end of this episode, I'll have an idea for what this series is going to be. But for now, I want to be, like, exploring KSP2, figuring out what the limitations of the current systems are, and figuring out what the improvements are. So essentially, I want to be comparing it to KSP1, <laughs> this is really funny. I like this. <laughs> I want to be comparing it to KSP1, and I want to be essentially looking at how good of a foundation this is for building over the next, like, decade, right? I don't know if they're planning to develop it for the next decade, but KSP1 was about a 10-year-long ten 10 year game. So this might be somewhat similar. We'll see. For the time being, let's go ahead and hop into single player. There's no multiplayer yet. That is on, on the roadmap. I've already set up all of the graphics to be completely maxed out here. Actually, we could turn VSync on, but I'm not going to do that for right now. Graphics are maxed out. I know that there's some concern that this is bugged sometimes where it like shows medium and high selected. It's selected on high on everything. So we're maxed out here. If we have performance issues, I know there have been concerns about those, but if we have performance issues, we can turn down like our anti-aliasing or something like that. We'll see how that goes. We also may need to do some audio tweaks, but for now, let's hop directly into single player. Hmm. Okay, so these this is a campaign system. Got it. So this is going to be very similar to KSP1's campaigns. So we can start this. This is a sandbox mode. That's the only option right now. Okay, so there's no, like, uh, career or science mode as of this moment. But we can change the difficulty settings, allowing reverting, allowing quick loading, including stock vessels. We can actually probably turn that off, but whatever. It doesn't really matter. Infinite fuel and infinite power. Now, I noticed that these were actually in the gameplay options in the menu. Same with the unbreakable joints and no crash damage. I'm not sure if we have these off. Do they get toggled on with the menu still? Because I noticed that in the settings under gameplay here, or actually under general, we've got infinite propellant and infinite electricity, no crash damage and unbreakable joints. So why is that in both, I wonder? That's intriguing. I guess this is just to turn it on or off on a per campaign basis. But you can probably still toggle it from the menu, is my guess. We're going to keep it off, obviously. Docking tolerance of 150%. That's the default. Uh, actually, hang on. Easy, normal, hard. Okay, so hard does not allow quick loading, reverting, or including stock vessels. Rocket scientist turns d down the, the docking tolerance. So that's mostly just the... The whole thing, right, is the docking tolerance. We'll run it with docking tolerance at 50, but for now we're going to have all of this up. Probes require comnet for control for all of them, actually. All of these presets, the probes require the comnet for control. So we're going to allow reverting, quick loading, and stock vessels. Actually, I'm going to turn stock vessels off. I never use stock vessels. We're going to allow reverting and quick loading just under the same rules that I do for KSP1, where we do it as time sinks or rather time saves, and uh, I'm not sure if we're going to be able to, this is going to be a sandbox mode, so it, it actually wouldn't really matter in a sandbox mode, right? So that's definitely interesting. We're going to run on custom difficulty. This campaign name is going to be Atreides' first campaign. Cool. 
very creative. And our agency name, oh, we can actually set the colors like this. Okay, got it, base and accent. These are the available flags right now. We may add our flag in later. I have not done that yet. Uh, for the time being, we could do something like this. That kind of looks like an A. <laughs> and uh, let's see. This doesn't appear to really be changing the flag colors, which is intriguing to me. I kind of expected it to change the flag colors. Okay, this is definitely a little different. First time user experience is currently on. We'll leave that on because I'm interested in seeing what the first time experience is. We probably don't need it, but we'll just go ahead and go with this for now. That is a uh, very startled Jeb. Fantastic. Interesting that the loading happens here like this instead of at the beginning, which is where it happens with KSP1. Definitely a little bit of a lengthy loading period, but hello, what is this? Apparently it's like two minutes long almost. Space program leaping forward into the cosmos. Since the dawn of Kerbal Kine, we have looked to the sky and wondered what sublime mysteries lie hidden in the darkness, like jewels never beheld. These untold treasures may soon reveal themselves due to the efforts of recently founded Kerbal Space. Oh my! <laughs> I think that might have been the only copy of the orientation film. Hold on! Slides! Uh, somewhere! Ahem! <clears throat> Welcome to your first day running the Kerbal Space Program. This campus hosts the greatest ever gathering of astronomers, astronauts, and engineers. After years of focused effort, this collection of geniuses has created... several very impressive buildings. We believe we have all the necessary pieces to take our first steps off the ground. The best way to advance our technologies further is to get up there and learn by doing. All we need now is somebody to show us how to put all these parts together. Well, we also need somebody to help us out with the flying. We need a lot of help, actually. That's why you're here. My name is Paige, by the way. If you need any hints, feel free to visit me over at the training center. Everything in there is well padded, so it's a great place to get up and running. Welcome aboard! I liked the Carl Sagan knockoff there. That was that was pretty funny. Okay, so what do we got going on here? So we've got the KSC. Oh, they've got a menu here for selecting these. Okay, cool. Yep, welcome to the Kerbal Space Center. This campus has everything you need to turn your fledgling space program into the stuff of legends. Our engineers have created a training program that will guide you through building and flying your very first rocket. We probably don't need it, but I do want to go through this just to see what, like, first-time users would be taught. I feel like that is important to know. So, we can go through the lessons at the training center. If we want to start building right now, the VAB is where we want to be. Okay, so the training center is where these lessons will be. Again, I don't think we need them, but I do want to know what the first-time user experience would be because... KSP is a difficult game to get into, right? And I feel like this is important stuff. Oh, this is a lot of stuff. Okay. Uh, we'll just cruise through this pretty quickly here. Lessons take place in a simulation. Okay. So, the basics of rocketry. Launch and control a pre-constructed rocket. Attach parts to construct a rocket in the VAB. Control the camera in the VAB. <laughs> Interesting that they do that in that order. Okay, whatever. Launch and stage your rocket to understand what the stages are. Read your rocket's altitude using the altimeter and manipulate time using time warp. Safely land and recover a command pod by using a parachute. Makes sense. Uh, learn how to miss the ground and make an orbit. And use the stack decoupler to stage a vehicle. Radial boosters, radial decouplers. Sure. Uh, customize the staging stack. Yep. And learn how to use the nav ball to make a gravity turn. Makes sense. Learn how to open the map and circularize to make an orbit. And then changing our orbit, expanding an orbit to reach a high orbit, 
learn what electric charge is and how to generate it, and learning how to deorbit and then orbital transfers. So departure from Kerbin timing. <laughs> yeah, we don't do that here. We can learn how to perform a maneuver to transfer an orbit from one celestial body to another, so a Hohmann transfer, and we can complete an orbital transfer from Kerbin orbit to a stable lunar orbit. Okay, that's relatively comprehensive. Cool. We're not going to do those. I just wanted to see what was available. We've got the VAB here. We've got actually two different runways. We've got, looks like, four launch pads. That's another launch pad there. Uh, are these supposed to be, like, landing pads? I'm not sure what these are supposed to be. These are apparently not launch pads. This is a launch pad here. We've got three launch pads out over this direction. It looks to me like there's some... Uh, anisotropic filtering needed over here, but whatever. That's kind of irrelevant. Uh, there's also this dock, cool, for launching watercraft. For now, of course, we are going to... I'm wondering what this building is. I guess these will unlock later or they're not implemented. That's possible. For the time being, let's hop into the VAB. This is a sandbox mode, right? And I think for the purposes of this series, with this being sandbox mode, I'm actually going back over to the KSC. That is very quick to load. I like that. That is really fast compared to Kerbal 1. So let's go into the tracking station really quick here. Okay. So looking at the Kerbin system here, we've got Kerbin, we've got Moon, we've got Minmus, we've got Eve and Gilly, and Moho down here. We've got Duna and Ike. We've got Dress. We've got Jewel, Tylo, Lathe, Bop, Pole, and Vol. And we've got Elu. So this is the standard KSP-1 system. Cool. So that's all looking good. I like how we can actually see the sphere of influence here. That's neat. That's a nice little up upgrade there. Yeah, we can see the sphere of influence. That's really handy. We'll see what the actual tracking, or rather the maneuver planning, ends up feeling like. Yeah, this is the map view. Zoom out. Yep, yep, yep. You can place a maneuver. Yep. All fairly expected stuff. So we've got the synopsis, physical characteristics, and orbital characteristics of Elu here. Uh, looks like the gravity of Elu is a little lower, but I expect there to be some differences there. Okay, so we're going to hop back. Uh, apparently, this is now broken. Let's head, in, head into the VAB and see if that arrow is still there. It is. Cool. Okay, so we're going to head back into the tracking station and see if we can get that arrow to disappear. Uh, maybe. Do we need to reload? This is exciting stuff. Okay, so we can right-click on the Sphere of Influence to focus it. Noted. And we can set our targets this way. Um, I'm going to quickly F5. It makes a sound. I'm not sure if that's actually quick saving. Uh, let's go ahead and make a save here. Uh, it did. It did make quick saves. Cool. It just didn't pop anything up that it made a quick save, unlike KSP-1. So in that case, I'm going to reload this quick save that we just made, and hopefully this arrow will go away. Let's see. We did manage to find that bug, but that'll be fine. So I think for now, all we're going to look to do is do a quick exploration, like we did with our very first KSP series on this channel, which was the Solar System Tour. And the arrow is still there. We might have to fully restart the game. Okay, I will be back in just a moment. Okay, here we are with the game restarted. The arrow is gone, and that's great. We're going to head into the VAB here, and let's get into orbit. That is, of course, going to be our first goal. So, yep, this is where we assemble vehicles. This is the parts picker out over here. It definitely looks a little different. I'm noting different fuel types. Methalox here? Fascinating. So this is a methalox fuel tank. It has four tons of methalox. So that is me is methane and oxygen as your oxidizer. Or just generic oxidizer? Possibly. Well, we'll go ahead and continue here. This is where we construct it. Yes, that's fine. We want a thrust to weight ratio over one. The trip planner. Okay, the trip planner is definitely something that'll be interesting. So this would be for going a one-way trip to Bob. We would want 7,080 DV. We might not make it. We have nothing right now. So all we'd be doing, all we'd be looking to do here is a uh, a round trip to Bop. Yeah, yeah. 
So we're not going to be doing any of this for now. We'll probably use this to estimate how much DV we need. This is our symmetry mode. This is our snap tool. Selection, rotate and translate, assembly anchor, launch assembly, color manager. Fascinating. So this is where we see our thrust to weight ratio. Cool. This is our parts manager, action groups, Kerbal manager. Cool. Okay, so for now, it looks like this is all we have, is these bits here. Nope, never mind. That's just the favorites. Okay, so for our command pod, what are we going to bring? Uh, how many Kerbals does this seat? Oh, three seat. Okay, I see it up at the top there. So this would be a single seat. This would be a lander can. What do we want to do? Well, we're just looking to get into orbit with like a Gemini style rocket, right? So, ooh, that goes in and out instead of up and down. How do we go up and down then? I don't know. We'll figure it out, I'm sure. <laughs> okay, so for now, these are our probe controls. We're going to have this be crude. And we are going to hop in... Let's see, this is all methylox, this is monoprop, this is xenon, interesting, and this is hydrogen. Okay, so we want to go into our engines and start looking at, like, an initial, like, sea level engine, right? So, actually, we should be thinking about our maneuvering stage, our orbital stage. So, this is a Reliant. This is a Swivel. This is a Thud. These are all parts from KSP-1. Skipper, Dart, a Vector, a Poodle, a Mainsail, Rhino, Labradoodle, Mammoth 2, Twitch, Spark, Ant, Terrier. So, we're probably going to end up using a Terrier, right? That's an interesting sparking effect. Okay, so we're going to park a Terrier out over here. I'm noting that this did not uh, go away. We actually seem to be able to build multiple parts simultaneously. That's very nice. So that would mean that we'd be able to get a main cell would be so much overkill. We'd be looking at something like a T-45 swivel out over this way. This is going to be a very KSP-1 style rocket for the record. We'll see what that ends up looking like. So we should bring in a parachute here. A Mark 25 is going to be way too big for sure. We're going to bring in a Mark 16 probably. Yeah, that'll do the trick for our re-entry. We're... Do we need a heat shield? Probably... Does this even have heat shields? It does. Okay. So, we probably don't need a heat shield, but I'll include one just for the, the time being. Then, we're going to get a decoupler. So, coupling here. We would want a TD-12. And we would then go with a fuel tank. Now, this here... What type of fuel do these use? Are these hydrogen? It's a the, the T45 is a methylox engine. The Terrier is also a methylox engine. So these are running off of methylox. Okay. So we'd want like a T400. This is probably wildly overkill for our orbital stage, but something along the lines of this. I'm wondering here. Well, that would be in the what what color manager? In here. This is action groups. Kerbal manager, parts manager. I had all these open. Okay, so this would be applied to the entire assembly or to the part. Set as agency colors. This may not be fully implemented. I'm not seeing any differences right now. It doesn't really matter all that much. We can get rid of the color manager. It doesn't appear to have a way to close it. Okay. Apparently, this is the fly safe vehicle. Okay, Scott. So, we're going to head down to our coupling here. We're going to grab another TD-12. And we're going to grab, like, a T-800 and a second T-800. I'm going to duplicate that with alt-click. That does work. Fantastic. So, we just put on something like this, right? We appear to be able to scroll up and down some... some ah, middle click and drag. Okay. That'll do it. Okay, so we have something like this. We could definitely put on some aerodynamics. Uh, what is our center of mass compared to center of... They're calling it pressure. Okay, fair enough. So we would go with something like a light wing here. We'd want to go into... At, like, probably at least quads. Oh, that's huge. Okay, so we'd be looking at stabilizers, not wings. Our control surfaces. Probably control surfaces. Even that small control surface is pretty huge. Yeah, that's, that's really quite large. 
This is probably too low in terms of our center of center of pressure here. So I want to grab these guys and not this guy. <laughs> Let's undo that. I want to grab these guys and move them up a bit. And we'll see how this thing flies. This is a very, like, early game KSP-1 style rocket, right? And we'll see what that ends up feeling like. So we can see our staging over here. And then, let's see here. What is this stage 2? That's that decoupler. So this engine should fire with this decoupler. Yes. And then that, and then our parachute. Okay. So let's just put this out on the pad and see if we can get into orbit. So we will call this the Orbital Machine... Mark 1. Perfect. We'll save that. This is... It has autosave on it. Interesting. So this appears to have 4,900... Or 4,495 meters per second. So my question is, if we look in at the engineer report, can we see on it like a per stage basis or like with the altitude differential? I mean, yeah, we're not going to make it to Bob. We're not trying to make it to Bob. This is an insane Delta V, though. Is this assuming that we're already in vacuum here? Okay, here we go. This is more like what I'm looking for. So this has about 2,100 dV in it. This has 2,359, which according to KSP-1 numbers should be more than enough to get us to where we want to go. I have no idea how relevant that is to KSP-2 numbers, but let's go ahead and hit the launch button. Are we ready to fly? Here's a few pointers. This element is our flight cluster. That's wiggling quite a lot more than it looks like it's wiggling. Okay. So, let's see here. SAS on. It starts on, looks like. Okay, so this is this is retrograde. This is prograde. This is up. This is down. This is south. This is north. Interesting options. Our throttle, we start throttled up, it looks like. We can speed up and pause time down there. Yep, staging stack over here. Yep, looks good. Safe simulated environment. This is this is a sandbox mode. This is plenty safe and simulated. Hi, Bill. Why is Bill here instead of Jeb? I don't know how I feel about that. Well, at any rate, what is our thrust to weight on this stage? Uh, let's see here. This is our delta V. Can we click here and see the thrust to weight like we could in KSP-1? Apparently not. We should be able to see our thrust to weight here somewhere. This is interesting. Out of curiosity. Okay, nothing in there. Noted. Okay. I'm sure we can see this somewhere. We see our delta V. Liquid fuel and oxygen. Yep. Where is our thrust to weight at? Well, at any rate, let's go ahead and take off here. And see what this ends up looking like. We've got our nav ball here. It should be reasonably fine. Uh, if we fail, then that's fine. This has a countdown. We can skip our countdown, apparently. Oh, hello. They've got a deluge system. Cool. So off we go. Absolutely fine. We're moving at about 20 meters per second right now. I'm not sure which of these we're currently set to, but let's go ahead and, ooh, that feels like that's a lot of movement there. Okay, we're pulling this on over. There's a little bit of oscillation here. Okay, let's lock it pro grade for now. The visuals look good. There's no doubt about that. I can tell it's unoptimized, but it's not, like, unplayably bad. What is our current apoapsis? I think we're going over a little too aggressively. I want this to go back to, like, stability. Okay. We're also off of our 90-degree marker. And let's just continue to raise up our apoapsis here. Cool.
We definitely need more altitude. I think that's very clear. Let's, ooh, aerodynamics are very angry at us. Okay. <laughs> I guess we're chilling here. I don't think this first flight is going to make it quite into orbit. That's fine. We don't have to. Our apoapsis is definitely in the category of non-great. Hello, Moon. And we're going to run out of fuel here pretty soon. Now, this is a very, very basic rocket, right? And that's fine. That's completely and totally fine. The stability mode is very stable. That's for sure. But our apoapsis is way too low. This moved over far faster than I was expecting. So that's for sure. Oh, wow. It uh, really didn't like that. Wiggling all over the place. Got a little bit of cracking going there. But we're going to go ahead and do this. We're going to head over to retrograde if we can, but we kind of can't. At this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this guy down here. Our parachute is currently unsafe, right? So we want to move over towards retrograde, but we're really, really locked in here due to aerodynamics. We are slowing down. I'm guessing this parachute is unsafe. Based on, yeah, shoot safety is unsafe. We were definitely planning on coming in slightly differently. <laughs> we can try this again, though. I was definitely not expecting the prograde marker to move over quite as quickly as it did. But because I play based on feel, this isn't super shocking. So we're probably going to crash here. Shoot safety is currently risky, and now it's safe. Okay, that was fascinating. Bill's actually going to survive here. We're underwater right now. And we're going to be... Are we rising to the surface? We are. But we should be able to recover this now. There we go. Cool. So we're going to... I mean, we could just revert it to launch and try it again. We need to feel out that gravity turn, right? I feel like that is quite important here. Is feeling that out. So it seems we were too aggressive on the gravity turn, and aerodynamics seem to feel quite a lot tougher to deviate from in KSP2, which is probably a good thing. Some of that probably has to do with these, these control surfaces, right? Oh my, that was a bit laggy, but that should be fine. This time, we're just going to go straight up for a bit. It didn't do the countdown this time. That's interesting. Okay. So we're going straight up this time. We're going to feel out how it feels going up to like 150 or even 200 meters per second before we start turning. More altitude is obviously the answer. Although I am thinking that we're probably going to need more delta V in this initial lifting stage. But maybe we should try just going straight up here for a ways anyway until our apoapsis is maybe like 20 kilometers. We'll need to feel all of this out, so that'll be fine. It is feeling very, very stable, no doubt about that. So that's an apoapsis of 10 kilometers there. It's very jerky as we attempt to pull it over, right? And I think that's because we are a little bit over-controlled here. Cool. 20 kilometers is our current apoapsis. And let's just go ahead and lock to prograde. We're getting some amount of horizontal speed here, but we're going to need more. 30 kilometers is our current apoapsis. I'm assuming it's the same 70 kilometers for the uh, altitude here. Oh, this is uh, chugging a bit. No doubt about that. I wonder, I, I doubt it's GPU bound, to be honest. I really doubt that. Let's head on over to the horizon here. We've got that plume expansion going on. I like that. Okay, 
it's wanting to come back towards the prograde marker, which makes sense. Okay, we're staging here. And this is our altimeter here. We're now in orbital mode here. With our apoapsis reaching 70 kilometers soon, I'm wondering what our horizontal velocity is. I mean, it should be pretty decent. Our current altitude is about 50 kilometers. We're definitely going to want a little bit more oomph in that first stage. That's very clear. So let's bring this on forward. 75 kilometers is decent. Time to apoapsis is increasing right now. So we should just stop burning here. And let's head into here. <laughs> Yeah, it'll, it'll crash here. So we'll create a maneuver plan, and we want this to be... Let's see, how do we, acti how do we activate this? Like, how do we... Ah, prograde. Here we go. Beautiful. So, prograde of somewhere around... Here would do. So we need to start our burn in about one minute, and now we need to be at the maneuver node, which we can do. There we go. How much delta V will this require? 646. We've got plenty, so we're going to make it into orbit here. Looks good. Let's go ahead and warp forward here a little bit as we prepare this burn. So this is 10x here. Interesting. 4x. Got it. That pauses it. I don't know why that appears twice, but we'll start our burn right about now. Beautiful. So this is going to be a 30 second burn, looks like. And this will get us nice and circularized. Looks good. This is fairly intuitive. It definitely needs some optimization at some points. That's very clear. But I mean, at this stage of the development, that is to be expected. So I'm not shocked, I'm not shocked by that and I am okay with it. I don't think that it's a GPU bottleneck. I can experience or experiment with that at some point, but there we go. That should be us in orbit. So we can delete this maneuver and a periapsis of, actually, we're not quite there. There. We're slightly off in terms of our, uh, <laughs> in terms of our actual, what's the term I'm looking for? Eccentricity. There we go. Our eccentricity is a little bit off here, but it's okay. It's completely fine. So we can then do a quick re-entry. This will be a little bit of a long episode, but that's completely fine. It's a bit of a special episode being the first one here. So we're just going to bring this on in. And we'll put our periapsis at... Can we uh, view that? Like, pin this open? Hmm. What is this periapsis going to be? I don't know. We can come out over here and see that this is 72 kilometers. This is 13. Okay, there we go. Can we not see that while the maneuver is open? That's a strange oversight, if so. That's something that they're going to need to fix. 31 kilometers should be reasonably fine. Okay, let's head on over to the node. Now keep in mind, our electric charge is actually full. We have no way to generate electric char charge on here. Why is our electric charge not being utilized by our reaction wheel? That is my question right now. Unless we have like a built-in solar panel on this? I don't think so. I would think that our electric charge should be getting eaten up by the reaction wheel. Maybe this reaction wheel built in here doesn't actually have electric charge. I don't know. But we're going to warp over to when we're going to start this burn. Or maybe electric charge only activates when you're higher up. I know the tutorial kind of insinuated you needed electric charge soon. Time warp limited due to proximity to a celestial body. Whatever, that's fine. We're getting close to the atmosphere here, so that looks good. We're going to warp forward a little bit further. Three, two, oh, it's paused. One and zero. 
Cool. We slightly overshot it. We should probably head around to... Well, actually, let's take a look. Periapsis of 26 kilometers. That's good enough. Okay, so at this point, we don't need this additional fuel. We have 644 Delta V left in it, but we'll go ahead and ditch that. And now we want to switch over to Surface Retrograde. Yes, we were already there. Beautiful. Okay, so now we're going to warp forward. Until we enter the atmosphere, which will be now. Approaching Kerbin, lowering time warp to 4x. So, is that physics warp? This must be physics warp. Okay, cool. We're going to bring this on in. And we're seeing our apoapsis drop here. We're 10 minutes to our periapsis. But honestly, with this heat shield, we're not going to have any real problems here. I don't like that you can't right-click on this again to make it go away. I'll probably get used to that, but I feel like you should be able to. Okay, cool. So we're bringing this right on in. It definitely needs a little bit less of an aggressive gravity turn, it feels like, for KSP2. A little less. This level of detail here is uh, slightly pixelated on the coastline. Noted. That's probably, I think that's one of those things that they said that they were working on in the update. So that's reasonably fine. We're now going to hit the surface. Excellent. In approximately eight minutes. But we're continuing to slow on down here. Our altitude is about 41 kilometers. And our aero braking should continue to kick in here. This will be a good test of how the aero, aerodynamic system and aero braking feels compared to KSP-1. Auto ground. Okay. We see our surface velocity substantially dropping. I'm not seeing any heating effects as of right now. So we may not be coming in fast enough to see any sort of aerodynamic effects there. I know that they exist. But we're going to bring this on in. And our parachute actually looks like it is safe to deploy right now. Indeed it is. Cool. So let's go ahead and deploy our parachute. And we're currently about 10 kilometers above the surface. We're going down at 4x time acceleration. I really like these volumetric volumetric clouds. I think they're really, really cool. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. I like that a lot. So we're coming on in here, and we're definitely going to land fairly safely at about 5 kilometers, kilometers, 5 meters per second. All is looking good there. Cool. So, Bill survives to fly again. I don't know if they can die in sandbox mode, but whatever. Doesn't really matter. Sandbox mode being the only mode available is a little disappointing. I'm not going to lie. But I definitely think a solar system tour is the way to go here. Cool. So there's a successful landing from our first orbit in KSP-2. I like it. Let's go ahead and recover that vessel. There we go. You can always be better. Indeed you can. It's true. So let's just go back to the KSC. There we go. I definitely like how fast the loading times are. If they iron out a few of those performance issues, I think this is a really solid base to work from. It'll require feeling things out a little bit more, but yeah, I'm I'm quite excited to go forward with this and see what there is to see in the Kerbal system. For now, it's well past time to put a cut in here, so I'm going to go ahead and do that, and next episode, we are going to set our sights on the moon. You can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings, and a very special thank you to all of the channel members for making this video possible, including ALS Gamer, Kentuin, James, Shadow Wolf, Emlohan80, Kentogen, Nick Smarty, Dimitri H, Punching the Microphone, Spartan News, Unisol, Rogue Corvid, and all the rest. And of course, you. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to support the channel, you can click the join button down below the video. And as always, I will see you all next time.